this video, I'm going to be adjusting the gas system on this six millimeter arc that I built in a previous video. Um, when I put this thing together, I did use an Aero Precision adjustable gas block. So they give you a little Allen wrench to be able to reach in the front side of that. And the first thing you need to do is turn it all the way in. Now it will click as you turn it. So once it stops, then what you'll need to do is count the number of clicks as you back it out. Once you start turning it, you'll count to about 15 clicks and that will have that gas system running all the way open. So that's where you want to start. Now what we're watching for is the rounds or the spent brass coming out of the action and we'd like it to be somewhere in that two to three o'clock position in there. Um, maybe all the way back to about four is acceptable. Um, anything farther forward than that and you're putting too much gas to the system and you're you're beating that bolt carrier group back too much. You're putting too much vibration into the system um, and you're just wearing on it harshly. So you turn that down a little bit. You don't want it to go less than kind of that 4, 430 position. Anything further back than that, you're not getting enough gas to it. And more than likely, you're also not locking the bolt carrier group back uh, when the magazine's empty. So you need to kind of find that happy medium if you can keep it coming perpendicular off the rifle or what would be the 3 o'clock position coming out of there. I am planning on the majority of the time I'm going to be running a suppressor on it. The one that I'm using on it right now is a hybrid 46, so it is quite overboard on it. It doesn't produce much gas pressure, um, or back pressure I should say, um, overrunning it without the suppressor, so it is kind of nice that way, but whenever my other cans get out of jail, um, I'm sure those 30 cal cans are probably going to add a bit of back pressure to it, so I'll have to find the new gas setting on it. Um, who knows whenever I'll get those, but, um, let's go out to the range and, uh, shoot this thing. I'm out here testing the six arc and, uh, I've done a few safety checks and it does function. Um, but without the suppressor on it, it, uh, it cycles, but it won't lock the bolt back. Well, from where the gun's sitting, most of the brass... It's ending up in a pile about right there. So about the four to five o'clock position. I put the suppressor on it, and now it's got enough gas that it will lock the bolt back. So now I'm trying to turn the gas block down just a little bit in increments to see how far we can go with it still locking back. All right, it's got one round. Yep, still locked back. I guess we can take it down another notch. All right, adjusted it down two notches. We should be on setting 13. See what happens. Yep, still locked back. All right, let's go another couple notches. All right, down to setting 11. That last one kind of pitched it. Oh, probably about the 4.30, 5 o'clock range. So we'll see if this one will get it done or, or not. Nope, looks like we went far enough. Let's kick her back one. On my initial configuration, I haven't been able to get the bolt to lock back on an empty magazine, um, but just a couple of times without running the suppressor on it. So I went ahead and I'm gonna take out this carbine buffer tube 
and what I bought was a spring kill, 20% reduced power spring for it, and we'll see if that will get the bolt to lock back before we go and have to do something drastic like drill out the gas port and enlarge that to get more gas back to the system. I'd rather try that spring and see if we can't cut the gas back a little bit further to help when we're running the suppressor that uh, we're not getting it super dirty if we can cut back the amount of gas and still get it to cycle with a lighter spring. So let's uh, swap that out and then let's see what we can do out in the field. All right, so I got the reduced power spring in. I cut it down to what I believe is position 10 and we'll see if at that rate that if we can get the bolt to lock back on here. Nope, didn't lock back. We'll go ahead and open it up a little bit more. See what it does this time. Well, lock back that time. Let's see what it does. See if it'll do it again. Well, lock back again. I think we'll go with that setting. With the suppressor on it, I've dropped it down to position 10. It was at 12 without the suppressor and it was running real reliably. So uh, we'll see what it'll do here at 10 with it on, see if it'll get it down enough so that we're not over the gas in the system. Well, locked it back there. Drop it down one more here. I didn't see where the brass flew off to. Alright. Position 9, let's see what this will do. Yep, locked it back and it threw it right at about the three o'clock position. I think we might run with number nine. All right, so I've kind of zeroed up the scope here a little bit. We're gonna shoot a group down there with the suppressor on it. There is a, a, a decent amount of impact shift when putting that on there, but I, I, it looks like it does also kind of settle the groups in a little bit as well. But we'll shoot a group here at 100 yards and uh, see what this thing will do on paper. Go the upper right hand target.
Yep, there's a few flyers in that group. That's not looking real good. Hopefully, once we do some hand loads or if I can get a hold of some 108 ELDMs instead of these 105s, we'll find something that this thing shoots just a little bit better. Let's go down and take a look. So there's a five round group that I just shot. Not very good. That's about a two inch circle. That one right there was two groups ago when we was trying to center it up with the suppressor on it because it did shoot uh, low and right when you put the suppressor on it. But this thing seems to put two pretty close together and then we always got one flyer or in this case we got two together and three flyers in this gun. So we got it running reliably. Um, it's pitched in the brass anywhere from about the 230 marker back to the four o'clock marker, um, locking back the bolt every time. So I think we got the gas system tuned in pretty good here. Um, since this is gonna be a coyote rifle, um, this winter, when it gets pretty cold, I might have to mess with it a little bit more, see if it really gets down uh, in the single digits when we go out, see how well it, it cycles. But as of right now, the first time I was, I was adjusting the gas system, it was about, oh, between 75 and 80 degrees that day. Um, today, it was only about 45 degrees, and it didn't seem to have any issues now that we put that 20% uh, reduced spring in the back end of it, it's it's locking back every time. I think um, I was initially going to do the accuracy testing part of it in with this video, but I think I'm going to stop it here and break it up, and uh, I'll do a whole different video just on the accuracy side of it. Um, hopefully my dies show up here pretty soon, and We'll get into doing some hand loading, try a couple different bullets, maybe a lighter bullet for coyote hunting, and then maybe try some 108s or something like that, see if the gun likes them a little better than it does these uh, 105 factory rounds. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.